Today we go to Whittier Birthplace in Haverhill, Massachusetts for a special book signing by a descendant of the Whittier family. The author is Lisa Greenleaf, who has just published an illustrated version of one of Mr. Whittier's more famous poems, The Barefoot Boy. Now to get some insight and some background on the book, we talk with Ms. Greenleaf. Hi, I'm Lisa Greenleaf. Today is a dream come true for me. Um, we're at the John Greenleaf Whittier Birthplace and it's... Um, for three years I've been working on this book, one of um, John Greenleaf Whittier's poem, The Barefoot Boy. And it, for years I've known I was related to John Greenleaf Whittier, but, um, and I've always wanted to do something to, to honor him, my ancestor. So um, about three years ago, I came to this birthplace. I had been doing a lot of research. I came to the birthplace, walked in, and it ended up being, um, I walked in and Gus, the curator, was here. And he um, greeted me, and, I, and he started talking about Mr. Whittier, and I said, you know what, let me tell you who I am. And I said, I'm Lisa Greenleaf, I'm related to John Greenleaf Whittier. And so he ushered me over to Sarah Greenleaf's rocking chair, and when I sat down in the chair, I knew that my dream was going to come true. And it ended up being, um, as I said, three years, but I did a lot of research. And why, another reason why I want to do this is a lot of people, even you live in Haverhill and you live in surrounding towns, but a lot of people still don't know who John Greenleaf Whittier is, and it's a shame. And also, kids don't know who John Greenleaf Whittier is surrounding, unless you live here. So I wanted to um, bring his words, and they were from the 1800s, so they're very hard to understand. I wanted to bring his words and put visuals to his words. And I chose the Barefoot Boy book because... I've been in publishing for years, and what I realized was that when I laid out this book, it laid out to 32 pages perfectly, and including a biography that I got to write about him. And I geared the biography so that kids would understand it, and there's a lot of the images that I put in it. There's 26 full-color images. I used the land around here. I used um, historical pieces inside the house, and when you look at the book, the cover, the cover starts the story because that cover was an image that if you went online and you typed in the Barefoot Boy, you'd see this, this famous painting that I believe Thomas Hill did. And so I put that on the cover so kids would recognize it. The, my dad's generation used to have to memorize that poem. So I wanted everybody to relate to that. And the way that I wrote my story and told the story, the last illustration has Mr. Whittier as an old man looking up at the famous painting. So it comes full circle. So much detail that um, you can literally walk around the land inside the museum and you could take the book and you can find the images that I put in there. Because I wanted to be able to take the, take the, um, the past and merge it with the future and then put me in it. I started the actual drawings last October. The research was far be beyond that, and it took 10 months to illustrate this. And it was sort of over-consuming, but I just had this drive and this passion to be able to get this into the school system, inspire people, hugely inspire people, which um, I know as a little, I've been drawing since a little girl, and when I was drawing, it, it brought such joy and gratification that I thought when I was an adult, mm, that's not going to, you can't draw, you can't earn a living by drawing, and I absolutely am because I'm following my passion. The whole poem ins was inspired about John Greenleaf Whittier's childhood. He, he loved being outside. You know, he worked the farm. He wasn't a farm boy. He didn't like working the fields, but it was part of that generation that that's how you lived. You had to milk the carl. Uh, the cows and feed the animals and take care of the land. So whenever he could, every morning, he would get up and be excited to start his day. He'd do his chores as fast as he could and then he would go out and play in nature. He loved nature. He was inspired. And literally all through the summer he stayed barefoot and then, and the story will tell it if you re when you read the poem, he stayed barefoot and he expressed the fun and, you know, tossing his, his um, books aside and Nature was his, his resource. Nature was where he got all his inspiration. And so, and then soon it was becoming fall and he'd have to put back on the boots and kind of schlep around and start doing that. And then, you know, he wouldn't be outside as much. Well, what do you think of this event? You must have some feelings about the people here today. Um, I have people here <laughs> that I went to nursery school with. I've got my, most of my family here. 
I have my high school guidance counselor here. As a child, um, I struggled in school. I ended up, um, I wasn't able to read and write. I was, I, I, had, I was in the special ed department, which at my age was a hard thing for me to do. They told me I wouldn't amount to anything. So I fooled them all because the, the drive and inspiration and I knew that I could be somebody and it's not even being somebody, it's I love to inspire people. And if anything, my talking to people or even looking at my book, it's like everybody can have their dreams come true. Absolutely everybody. Well, I understand you used a model from Abel. Yes. Yep, Aaron Zena. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yep. I, I knew from a lot of, um, I have over 20 years experience in publishing, and I did a lot of editorial pieces, and we had to draw extremely quick. And so I knew that I wanted a model. And I didn't really know who I was going to use. I thought of a friend's son. But when I came to visit here, there was a small postcard that said, Barefoot Boy. And it was this picture of this young man on there, young boy, 10 years old. I think he was even younger then. And I asked Gus, I'm like, who, who is this boy? He goes, oh, we have a competition. And then he started telling me, oh, well, Aaron's dad I taught in school. Oh, his uncle. And I thought, I'm going to use them because it tells, it makes the story come full circle to be able to use somebody that's connected with the town and bring it all together. And I couldn't have picked a better model. He was so sweet. And the days that we would come here the first day, freezing cold, November, made him take off his shoes, walked around barefoot. Two hours would pass. And all of a sudden, he's like, do you think we're done? I'm like, why? He goes, I'm cold. <laughs> but he was a delight. 